for me, and I think probably for most conservative Brexiteers, the fundamental point was about sovereignty, about democratic self-government. So for me, the most important thing is that we now make our own laws for our own country. And that was the fundamental principle that uh, when I was given a yes or no answer uh, or question in the referendum, there was only one way that I could vote. Uh, so I, I think, of course, there are opportunities. I think there will be more opportunities that could be taken, thinking in particular of some of the financial services deregulation that can happen outside the European Union. And I think we may see some of that from Kwasi Kwarteng, the new Chancellor. Uh, but uh, the fundamental thing for me is our ability to govern ourselves and make our own laws. But what about the trading of goods uh, across and from the EU, there's uh, an enormous amount of red tape that's causing huge hold-ups. We ourselves in Gibraltar have seen supermarket shelves empty. Is there going to be a concerted effort to try and sort that out? Well, I think the British government is keen to work with the government of Gibraltar and know the government of Gibraltar is working flat out to try to achieve a new deal with Spain. Uh, to make sure, and with the EU, to make sure that the trade over that border uh, moves more freely. And that has to be a good thing for everybody. When I was out in Gibraltar recently, certainly I was hearing some very optimistic uh, noises about those negotiations. And I wish uh, the government of Gibraltar very, uh, the very best in achieving that. Um, are you optimistic that an agreement can be achieved because we've seen the kind of queues that build up across the frontier at the moment? Again, a difficulty at times in bringing goods over into Gibraltar. And if a treaty agreement is, is agreed, then it's only likely to last four years and then we're going to have all the turmoil again. I mean, for Gibraltar, do you think Brexit has really worked? Well. It Gibraltar was always a special case and of course Gibraltar had its own reasons for a position which was very widely held uh, in, uh, in the territory itself uh, and I understand that. Uh, but I think that uh, the experience on both sides of the border when an agreement is reached uh, will be a positive one and uh, I think even if it's a four-year initial period of a treaty I think the experience of working constructively and well with neighbours uh, is one which should reinforce itself. And I don't think, once people have seen that there really isn't any reason uh, for creating unnecessary friction at the border, uh, and people have seen a, an agreement in place that's worked well, I don't think people on either side of the border will be baying for a change to make things more difficult again. So I, I guess my observation would be it's rather like the situation at the Irish border. Um, there has been more friction than was necessary uh, and the policing of the border, uh, trade across the border, has been uh, rather heavy-handed. Uh, that isn't in anybody's interest. So you know, I, I hope in both instances, the Irish border and the Gibraltar and the Spanish border, that we will see a more constructive attitude, positivity on both sides, um, moving towards a much easier trading relationship in both cases. One final question on that. There's always a give and take in any negotiation. Can you guarantee, can the British government guarantee that Gibraltar would not have to relinquish any aspect of its sovereignty uh, whatsoever in this treaty agreement between the UK and the EU over Gibraltar? Well, I think the British government has been uh, absolutely clear at every point uh, that Gibraltar's sovereignty is in the hands of the people of Gibraltar and will remain so. It's uh, really my fairly long association with Gibraltar, in particular the time when I was Shadow Europe Minister uh, 12, 15 years ago, and we'd had those difficulties at the time of negotiations between the then Labour government and Spain cutting out the people of Gibraltar. I think once we put that to bed, I think we've now moved on to a position where certainly this government is absolutely committed uh, to uh, guaranteeing that Gibraltarians make the decision about Gibraltar's sovereignty.